nuclear arsenal in South Korea. Why is this gaining so much traction these days? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, there's quite a lot of public support for that idea. And I think, you know, you could really, there's a few factors behind it. One of those is obviously North Korea's now got a very uh, potent nuclear arsenal. And there's concern even among some military people that I've spoken to that even if South Korea's conventional military is more uh, competent or better equipped with those nukes on the North Korean side, then the, that conventional balance is put out of whack. And the other factor, of course, is you know, the Donald Trump and that doubt that he's introduced into the alliance and with the possibility that he could be re-elected. Koreans are thinking um, in terms of the prospect of American abandonment or maybe questioning whether Americans are really willing to trade you know, Los Angeles for Seoul in that way. Huh. So I think that, that's, a, that's a major factor. The other issue, of course, is Ukraine and the threats, the nuclear threats that Putin has been making in that respect. So it's brought Koreans' attention to the fact that uh, it's, a, it's a, probably a more dangerous world than they thought. And they're not just up against North Korea, but also an increasingly powerful assertive China, a uh, unpredictable Russia. So there's that strong support for Korea to have that kind of autonomous uh, security, I guess, that nuclear weapons provide. The, the problem for Seoul is that the Americans just have zero interest in facilitating that development. Mm -hmm. So Koreans are put into a choice where they really would have to choose between the alliance with the US and pursuing nuclear weapons. Right. And I think Yoon has made that choice and he can see that, you know, the it's the alliance provides more overall security than trying to develop nuclear weapons would. What did you think of the summit that happened yesterday? Uh, who gets to go home and call it a win? Well, I think this is a win for Yoon in terms of Kashida's shown that he's willing to reciprocate Yoon's outreach and this is sending a very strong signal that the relationship is now kind of routine and cooperative and respectful. The fact that Kashida was willing to find time in his busy schedule ahead of the G7 to, to visit and to return the visit so soon shows that he's keen to be uh, courteous and respectful. So I think Yoon will be um, happy with that and Japan for its part this is part of their process of uh, kind of further institutionalizing these this cooperation so they'll be happy that their main concern is that when Yoon finishes his term that the other side the left will um, come to power at which point all of this will kind of unravel so they're keen to um, institutionalized as much as possible. So this kind of routine institutionalization is a, is a, a step forward for them as well.